The first use case we are going to present is how we can extend and solve problems of software design patterns with description objects. And our objective, or what you are going to be able to do after this, is to extend the UML models without, and then address specifically drawbacks of software design patterns without. I'm going to show today the case of the strategy design pattern. First of all, the scenario. What we do is to use these basic advantages of description logics, like classification and inference, together with the particularities of ontology or, or of software design patterns, which are algorithm encapsulation, factorization of common functionality, and uh, choice of implementations. I mean, when you have multiple implementations of a given algorithm, you can factorize it and easily choose between them. And the result of this is an extension of the uh, strategy design pattern that we call selector pattern. That's what we are going to see. Well, an example for that is what we have seen already. Uh, order processing system, where we have classes like sales order uh, from different countries like USA and Germany. And what we want to do is to handle uh, the tax calculations for that. When we take a look at the standard uh, strategy design pattern. We have the client, we have the context, and then we have the different strategies. In this case, US and German. I have the context, which is the client is test controller, the context is the sales model, and the strategies are U.S. tax and German tax. And then, at some point in time, this is the strategy. You delegate the calculation of the tax amount or amount to the class tax. Well, but at some point in time, you have to decide which class you want to instantiate. Whether you want to say the U.S. tax class or the German tax class. By using purely UML or plus OCL, or if you want to use also action semantics, in this example we have also some action semantics like new here, you are going to write the body of the class of the operation, get rules for country, as follows. You have to write this if statement somewhere. So in this case, if sales order dot customer dot country dot name is US, then you create a new instance of the class US tax. Otherwise, you are going to create a new instance of the class German tax. Yeah. Well, which are, the, which are the problems with this kind of model? The problem is the coping. In this case, you have here to, to, to export the type text to the class test controller. So if you have uh, any change on the class or on the type or, or, or the te on the class text, you have to test your class test controller. As well. well, another problem is the tagging, because here at the class test controller, you are defining what the class US tax and German tax are. Yeah. You are doing this if condition, and what you are doing is basically defining what is this, what a US tax is and what a German tax is. So, you have this thing on your code, 
yeah, these things are completely separated and they are uh, uh, dependent from each other. If you change here and add other tax countries, for example, or if you change the, the way of taxing it, yeah, if you don't use German tax anymore, if you want to, to use the US tax or, or charging system, then you have to change this method, get rules for country, which is of course not so intuitive. Yeah? These are the problems that we have, that we, we face today. How we can solve these problems with uh, ontologies? That's the, the basic question we want to uh, answer. Well, the idea is that firstly we describe uh, these strategies and this context with our descriptions. Yeah? And then at runtime we let the reasoner classify dynamically the instance to identify whether this is or whether we have to use one strategy or the other strategy. Well, the diagram, the UML diagram will look uh, as follows. Here is the usual UML part that we have seen before. We have the task order, the, the sales order, test, tax, and US and German taxes. We go and extend this model with annotations. Our annotations, we say all of these uh, classes in gray, they are our classes. You don't have to annotate all the classes, as you see. These other classes are not our classes. Then you extend your UML model and add more annotations. Yeah? You say what is a German tax and what is a US tax. You go and define this. A German tax is a equivalent to a, a restriction on the class has customer and has customer must be a German customer. And what is a German customer? A German customer is a customer that has country Germany. Well, in this way we have already extended your models with our. What you have to do now is to specify at the one operation that will execute this uh, classification for you. That will call the reasoner and decide which which one of these classes are to be applied. That's what we're going to do with Sparkle AS. Yeah? You select here, you select uh, the type T, where self is the, the direct type of your, or where the, the, your, your context variable which is called self, yeah, is the direct instance of this type T. I mean, I want to have all the T's, all the types that are direct types of self, yeah. This is basically the query I just showed you with the demo, yeah, I'm going to show you later on. Well, what, what do we have here? We have here the dynamic classification of the instance, at runtime. Uh, we don't have this problem with coupling or tangling anymore because uh, the descriptions of the, the classes, US tax and German tax, are in our and are together with the classes. They are not apart anymore. Yeah? And we can reuse these descriptions. If you need this description, the same one. On, the, on another system, yeah? or if you want to extend it, you can just reuse it. You have the concept of the class. US tax or German tax specified and you can reuse it everywhere. So you couldn't do it before. Before you had this description in an OCL query operation that is completely apart from the, the class. Here you can do that. 